uh, uh, welcome and uh, you are joining. Thank you very much. We will be waiting for uh, a minute or so uh, before getting uh, uh, to the various uh, parts of our webinar today. I am very happy to, to see you so numerous and I am looking forward also uh, interacting. Many of you are certainly familiar with the various components of the Zoom uh, user interface. Uh, feel free to uh, use the Q&A uh, button at the uh, uh, bottom of the, your screen uh, by um, asking questions uh, that we will definitely uh, uh, look at and, and address uh, in the second part of, uh, of our meeting. Uh, we will also have a little uh, poll, uh, not much more than an icebreaker really in the middle, and I am looking forward to see your answers on that as well. Uh, we are also recording the webinar, so if uh, any of you uh, has to leave and you cannot uh, um, stay for the entire duration, it is not a problem. You will be able to catch up uh, and uh, take a look at the recording. Okay, so that was a little bit of uh, housekeeping. Welcome again. Uh, let's uh, uh, get to it. Uh, and uh, I will be sharing my screen so that uh, we can look at uh, our uh, agenda. My name is uh, David Orban and I am Managing Advisor of uh, Beyond uh, Enterprises. My contact information is right there. Uh, your inquiries, uh, your requests are very welcome via email, WhatsApp, or any other channel that you prefer. I am available on all of them and I'm easy to find. Uh, I also want to welcome uh, Brad Yassar, uh, founder and CEO of Equify. Brad, welcome to this webinar. Hello, David. Thank you for having me. So uh, today uh, we are uh, going to address uh, two main topics. What is new in the world of uh, blockchain? And then uh, we will uh, talk about Akify as a success story because it actually exemplifies a lot of the things that we will mention in the first part. Uh, there will be some uh, very, very exciting announcement by uh, Brad as well. Uh, which is uh, particularly timely today. Uh, I mentioned the survey, the Q&A, and then we will uh, close our meeting uh, today. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, move uh, uh, to the first uh, topic. Uh, Brad, what is new in the world of blockchain? I, I know a lot of things uh, are going on to the point or, or to the extent that uh, even those who are old timers feel sometimes uh, having difficulty keeping up. So what are the things that you would highlight that, that have caught your attention in the past uh, few months? Well, I mean, there's so much, uh, David, that's um, happening right now. Um, <clears throat> if, you, if you look at blockchain uh, utilization as, as a whole, um, there is a huge, still a huge uh, push towards DeFi. Um, new DeFi platforms, new DeFi pl protocols coming, um, only only rivaled by the activity in the NFT space. As you know, um, NFTs are not new, but uh, the application of of the non fungible token concept to art has taken off incredibly in the in the past um, year, year or so. So between what's happening in the NFT space and DeFi space, I think those are the two main drivers of a lot of innovation, a lot of conversation in the, uh, in the blockchain space. And of course, uh, if you look at it from the outside, not within the ecosystem, but just uh, uh, 
you know, what's happening in the world. Um, I, I think uh, a lot of uh, countries are looking into uh, legislating and, and creating legal frameworks around different aspects of, uh, uh, of, of blockchain, uh, whether it be mining related in, in Asia, uh, with with restrictions coming and and um, certain activities not being welcome anymore, uh, all, all the way to Northern America where uh, there's conversations around uh, legislation of of um, you know staking and proof of work and things like that. Um, there's there's a lot happening and and um, it's moving in a direction where things are getting much more uh widely much wider accepted and and um you know do you, do you have uh, your own take around for example uh el salvador um legislating around having at this point uh three currencies their own currency the u.s dollar which is already an official currency of the country that has been uh, dollarized for some time, and now apparently Bitcoin. What is your your take on that? Well, as someone who has um, taken the Bitcoin journey from early on, uh, it's it's an emotional moment for me, for even a smaller jurisdiction to say we're going to accept it as as a legal ways of, of of transacting now is bitcoin the best uh crypto asset to be used in daily transactions uh most would disagree so is it a great step for crypto for for crypto assets and cryptocurrencies um i believe so it's it's a step in the right direction it's a step uh forward for us is bitcoin the right uh solution Maybe not. Maybe there, there's a faster, better, cheaper option, uh, a, a cryptocurrency option that could uh, work as, as a daily transfer mechanism better. But uh, we need to start somewhere. So uh, if, if we don't um, you know, start with Bitcoin, which is obviously the first cryptocurrency and the uh, wide, widest known and, and accepted and discussed, um, we're, you know, we can't go anywhere, but it has to start there, then evolve into the specific needs of that country. And again, I'm not 100% convinced that uh, Bitcoin is the uh, answer, you know, El Salvador is uh, looking for. Um, you mentioned NFTs, and it is interesting that uh, the challenge of uh, creating digital scarcity uh, has been already uh, at the basis of the design of Bitcoin that prevents double spending, uh, contrary to what we are all accustomed to, to the ability to uh, copy, at least technically, if not legally, any digital file. Uh, Bitcoin uh, cannot be copied to make multiple value-bearing uh, digital representations of 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 uh, something that uh, uh, shouldn't happen, and, and and it successfully prevented that uh, for the past uh, uh, ten plus years, uh, because uh, even though there are uh, reports in the uh, mainstream uh, uh, publications uh, of various uh, supposed uh, bugs it, it actually never happened that uh, that bitcoin would be successfully double spent and now with nft uh, we are extending the concept uh, of digital scarcity to many more uh, types of objects and transactions the art market is the first uh, but i believe there will be a lot uh, of, of various uses. Mm, the um, uh, certificates for continuous learning, whether in uh, colleges or, uh, you know, doctors or, or other professions where you are required to, to continuously improve your, your knowledge, is another area that comes into my mind. Um, so 
the 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 nft space i agree is uh, very interesting um uh, once again uh, discounting or or ignoring the fact that certain degrees of enthusiasm uh, can be uh, excessive uh, i don't know if the 600 million dollar uh, investment uh, is was that it or 60 million i don't remember whatever crazy number it was uh, will be will be exceeded in the uh, in the auction that went on a few months ago at christie's right uh yeah yeah that that sounds about right so um what about uh, jurisdictions uh, there is a a continuous dynamic evolving uh, of uh, the United States, um, not at the federal level, but at the various state levels, uh, either embracing uh, uh, blockchain or, or hating on it, uh, where the first uh, uh, could be Wyoming, as an example, and the second, for example, the state of New York, that is famously anti-blockchain in various pieces of legislation that it uh, enacted. Uh, and there, there is now a, a new piece of legislation that uh, extends uh, dramatically uh, AML and KYC requirements, uh, including apparently uh, players that have been uh, exempt uh, and happily so, like, like mining operations. Do you think that uh, the United States can um, be at the rear guard in terms of being a jurisdiction as it has been uh, in the past or, or, or it will both have the need and the ability to, uh, to move to the, to the avant-garde instead? Well, that's, um, that's the million dollar question, David. I mean, probably a trillion um, dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what made United States, the, the economic power um, that it, it has become in the last century uh, and even the military power uh, that it has become in the past century is, is innovation. It's, it's allowing innovation to happen, not constraining, not um, stemming uh, new ideas uh, allowing sandboxes to happen so people can try things, people can build things, and of course, the country and the economy benefit from it. Uh, unfortunately, with blockchain, we're seeing the exact opposite of that happening. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of countries are really welcoming crypto activity, blockchain activity. They're experimenting with it both at, uh, at government level and in within the, the, the different um, economic systems and, and uh, social systems. Whereas at least what I'm seeing in the United States is, um, is, is a resistance to, to allow this new technology, uh, new wave of innovation to prosper within, within its borders. So going back to the latest updates on proposed legislation, I've said this before and, and um, you know, keep saying this. Uh, unfortunately, if you have people who are not familiar uh, with the technology and who don't have a lot of expertise in the way um, things work, uh, with a distributed model and with uh, blockchain and crypto ass assets, trying to create a framework for it without taking any input from experts, without taking any input from uh, members of that ecosystem and the entrepreneurs and the, the people building stuff, it's just not going to be a good fit. And, and the latest announcements are, are um, reflecting that. There is a disconnect between... Uh, what uh, what is being said, what is uh, being announced, and what blockchain needs globally, not just in the United States, but we need uh, sensible, meaningful uh, regulatory frameworks to allow innovation, to encourage innovation, instead of making statements like a lot of the crypto 
uh, investors and entrepreneurs are not paying their taxes, which is unfounded and, and you know, misguided uh, announcements saying they need to pay their fair share of taxes as if everyone in crypto is uh, avoiding tax payments. Um, you know, there has to be a more welcoming approach, maybe giving tax breaks to people trying to innovate with distributed mo models. And at the same time, trying to understand what framework is gonna align the goals of the government with the goals of the blockchain community and the society as a whole. I mean, is this something beneficial to the society? Should the government uh, support it and subsidize it just like it does with agriculture and energy and in other sectors where there's great government support because they realize that's a integral part, uh, part of the, um, the social fabric that that contributes more than just the economic value that it brings to the society. And I firmly believe a lot of the innovation that's happening in, in the blockchain space can have a similar positive impact if only it had the right framework, uh, legal and otherwise, to proliferate and prosper and uh, have, a, have, a, have an impact on, uh, on our future. So many of these uh, principles uh, guided you when you founded uh, Equify uh, because it, uh, it really aims to provide its uh, services and solutions to the broadest possible uh, set uh, of users. Uh, tell us a little bit uh, uh, about uh, Equify and, and why are you particularly excited today? Well, I mean, Equify is um, the, the brainchild of um, Jason Blick, who, who's my uh, partner, and, and, um, and I. And it's, it's basically our vision of bridging the, the gap between decentralized finance, the DeFi community, and digital banking. Uh, a couple of years ago, we um, were looking at the incredible growth and adoption that DeFi is seeing in the crypto circles and, and the proliferation of digital banking uh, globally with these uh, challenger banks coming um, live in, in Europe and Northern America and Asia. And, and so we were looking at what's happening and talking about wanting to... Um, do something, ha have a positive project that's going to uh, make lives better for a lot of people. And, and we identified two main problems. One was um, the, the lack of return on traditional uh, bank accounts. So if you have euro accounts now, you're earning um, negative interest rates, which is not fair to someone who's uh, worked all their lives and accumulated a certain amount of uh, wealth. And they're just trying to safeguard it, putting it in a bank. And now they're seeing it dwindle uh, because of negative interest rates. And the, the, the um, lack of banking uh, in, in the DeFi community. Again, we, we know people who created amazing projects, generated a lot of value for themselves and their communities, and they cannot access that value in their day-to-day -day lives uh, just because they're a crypto business and a DeFi project. And, and um, there's a lot of resistance towards um, serving those, those type of entities and people in the traditional banking space. So we thought if we can create a bridge between the two and connect those communities together, the people in digital banking can benefit from positive returns on, on their accounts uh, and, and the DeFi community can access the value they created in their everyday lives, which as a believer of DeFi um, to be the future of finance, uh, I, I figured that would be a really, uh, you know, challenging but worth doing goal to, to set for ourselves. And that's what we've set. And, and we create the, the Equify platform, which is actually going live in 
you know less than 40 minutes and and <laughs> that, um, that is know. that is the, the the big surprise and the and the great announcement for our uh, attendees because uh, yeah well and and thank you for dedicating your time and attention to us here today because for sure uh, the the moments before the launch uh, are are particularly uh, precious and 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 delicate of course of course and and again like we just wanted to create a platform where people can easily access uh DeFi products uh whether it be fixed or variable lending borrowing uh interest rate swaps uh yield aggregator that searches different uh DeFi uh projects pools platforms for the best returns on on uh people's crypto and then bring it in under the same roof uh, uh uh, with a with a licensed and regulated bank, uh, with our partnership with EquiBank, and be able to provide them um, checking accounts, credit cards, uh, fiat facilities that they may need, and and are are not getting right now. So I'm very excited to bring the two worlds together, and uh, you know, let's see how our launch goes. Huh. And and. Uh, uh... For starting from today, people will be able to sign up as well as uh, to buy uh, the the native token of the of the platform. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So the platform is not only accepting uh, a lot of the major um, cryptocurrencies uh, that are widely used right now, but it's also launching its own token that makes the experience on the platform uh, much more interesting. It, it enhances the rates you can get on the products you use, either reducing them if you're borrowing or increasing them if you're lending. It gives you uh, access to higher limits, uh, more options uh, based on your risk appetite and, and, and things like that. So we're very excited to see uh, all the innovative ways our, our uh, stakeholders are going to use the token and, and enjoy the platform. Very, very interesting. So um, before we mentioned uh, uh, jurisdictions, um, and uh, often uh, there are severe limits on who can participate uh, based on their residence or um, uh, citizenship even uh, sometimes. Um, who can uh, uh, participate here? Um, so we are done with our um, early uh, sale of SAFTs and, and, and tokens. And there were some uh, limitations and restrictions uh, on, on those. However, um, our banking partner, EkiBank, uh, is, uh, is, is a global digital bank. It serves 180 countries. So we're not trying to create uh, an experience that's only limited to certain parts of the world. Uh, same way uh, Ekibank has clients from all over the world, we uh, are getting the licenses and the regulatory approvals uh, necessary and, and, and that way we wanna have um, as many people be able to access the DeFi products uh, as we can too. So, so I think, uh, you know, the goal is to be a global uh, platform. And um, if we need to have any kind of restriction at the beginning, we're gonna work uh, as hard as we can to uh, address those and not have them uh, going forward. Um, now, you mentioned the two sides uh, of, of the offering, and, and certainly DeFi has been um, exciting also because it has an extremely low barrier to entry. Uh, certain products uh, catering to high net worth individuals require uh, thousands or millions of dollars to be accessible, but DeFi... Uh, is is uh, available to anyone, uh, including people who want to put uh, a few tens of dollars uh, at at play. Uh, and then, on the other hand, you mentioned the the traditional banking products, uh, for example, uh, the uh, ability to uh, 
have a, a, a debit card that can be fed with crypto and then used uh, in uh, traditional uh, retail um, uh, merchant uh, uh, places to, to buy anything and, and, and everything. So uh, is it correct that this uh, uh, basically uh, opens the opportunity to, to everyone almost, um, taking into account the eventual uh, limitations in jurisdiction? Uh, what what are your aims uh, with with Equify? Do you expect uh, uh, millions of people to start uh, using it um, in in what amount of time? Um, that's a good question. So the, there are two um, parts to that question. Number one is, do we want millions of people interacting with the platform and are we going to get there? Absolutely. The goal is to uh, give access to everyone who, who can benefit from our DeFi products, whether they're a fiat customer or a crypto uh, user, and bring them on the same platform so they can learn about the uh, other uh, suite of products and benefit from them. As a new platform, we are not going to allow millions of people to onboard at the same time, just because it's um, it's not practical. We want to be able to, uh, you know, ensure that their experience is at a level that we designed and that uh, we want to have them. So what we plan to do is have, uh, you know, have a scaling. Uh, strategy where uh, we're going to whitelist all the interested people and start allowing them on the platform uh, uh, but, and, and monitor the, the experience people are having. We said community-powered banking, and that's not uh, for nothing. We really want to bring in the community, get their feedback, especially on the platform, especially the UI, UX that uh, they go through. And then based on that experience, make it even uh easier to use, more pleasant to interact with uh, for, for our community and then scale as we go. So the goal is not to onboard 10 million people today. The goal is to be in a position maybe a year from now where 10 million uh, on the platform still is a very smooth, seamless, pleasant experience. Because what we found both on the DeFi side and the digital banking side is um, people really uh, want to feel comfortable. They want to feel safe and secure, and they don't want to do too many complicated things, which has been the curse of DeFi for a lot of uh, non-tech savvy people where they hear these returns, they hear these crypto assets uh, making uh, incredible returns for the people involved, but they don't know how to get involved because it's complicated for them to uh, buy crypto, create a wallet, transfer crypto from one place to the other, search for ex exchanges and pools and figure things out. I mean, they don't want to deal with that. They want a simple banking grade experience where they come, they see what's available, they select and they can easily uh, use the product. And to get to that level, I think we're going to go through a few more iterations of the platform we built uh, in order to reach mass adoption. So I want to launch uh, our little poll uh, and uh, you should be seeing it uh, on your screen. Uh, the first question is just a, a, a little icebreaker. And, and the second question, of course, is something that uh, we at uh, Beyond the Enterprises are very interesting in, in, uh, uh, in, in learning. Uh, and uh, while you are taking your time uh, answering that uh, question, let me uh, move to one of my uh, my uh, next uh, slides uh, because uh, we are uh, really uh, proud of of our clients uh, uh, we have uh, just uh, recently uh, recalculated that the combined uh, market cap 
uh, of the over 50 clients that uh, Beyond Enterprises helped uh, uh, achieving uh, their success uh, uh, is now over $14 billion. Uh, and we really want to congratulate them. Uh, these are not companies with uh, a 30-year history uh, uh, that have been on the public market for uh, 20 of those 40 years. Uh, these are projects uh, with uh, talent, passion, and sweat, and dedication that uh, didn't exist uh, until four or five years ago, any of them. So uh, this uh, level of uh, value creation is, is fantastic, exhilarating, really, and uh, we are very proud uh, to um, have been able to contribute to them. Um, so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, just to um, give you a little bit of feedback, uh, yes, uh, uh, some of you are very uh, sanguine around uh, Bitcoin uh, and uh, say that uh, you believe it is going to be close to $100,000 by the end of the year. Uh, uh, most of you are... Uh, in the middle, but uh, none of you believe that it will crash, uh, and I uh, agree. E and as far as the second uh, question is concerned, of course, we are happy to uh, see that uh, uh, many of you are uh, in need of help right now. We will be in touch in order to provide you with anything you may need. Uh, and uh, uh, also, those of you who are working on uh, blockchain projects in the near future, feel free to, to, to reach out in order to be able to start uh, evaluating your needs and hit the ground uh, uh, running when uh, you are uh, ready. So let's go to the, to the Q&A, uh, where we have uh, many uh, interesting uh, questions. Uh, first, uh, uh, a question that is uh, uh, concerning um, what we mentioned about uh, what is new uh, around uh, the world of blockchain, uh, and it is the Ethereum hard fork, uh, Ethereum London hard fork that uh, uh, was triggered just uh, 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 yesterday. Uh, and the question is, uh, do you expect that this will lead to uh, a decrease in the uh, uh, cost of, of uh, Ethereum transactions? Well, so I mean, the, the intended um, effect of uh, at least one of the changes that the London Fork uh, brought to us was hopefully not necessarily reduction, but normalization of, of uh, transaction fees. So the, the challenge with uh, how um, Ethereum uh, was operating prior to London was that at peak times, it was a rush towards the maximum fees. Everyone wanted to buy their NFTs the quickest, get their transactions pushed through the network the fastest. So there was always an increasing amount of fees spent on transactions during those um, during those uh, those times where there was a lot of traffic, a lot of network traffic. With the London fork now, what it's doing is, it, it, the network itself uh, tries to discourage people from putting exorbitant fees because uh, now there's an eat burn mechanism where excessive amounts of fees paid are burned instead of going to um, the miners as a fee. So there is a disincentive on both sides, both on the miner side as well as the um, uh, people who want to have their transactions validated to just rush towards a maximum fee because it's it's not going to be rewarded to the people who are going to do the transactions. So it just happened uh, yesterday. And since then, I think uh, 
thousands of ETH have been burned. Uh, and and there is um, there there is a tracker online that shows the ETH burned, and it's uh, it's it's um, it's an experiment that we're going to see. In theory, it should reduce the transaction fees. It should put uh, price pressure on ETH because uh, instead of being fully inflationary, now there's a deflationary component with the burning of ETH with each transaction. But after 24 hours, I mean, anyone's guess is as good as mine. Maybe it'll go in the other direction. Who knows? Uh, another more general question, and then uh, there are uh, some around Equify itself. Uh, what do you see uh, the biggest challenge being in educating people about uh, blockchain and uh, its benefits? Um, what uh, uh, are you doing to, uh, to address that? Uh, specifically, Equify um, wants to, to bring so much to people and and for them to realize and then adopt Equify, they have to learn about it. So how how do you plan to overcome that? Well, I mean, there's no David. There's no shortcut. There's no overcoming that. E education has been uh, the the biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity at the same time for blockchain and cryptocurrencies and decentralization because. If enough people are educated and they make a decision to be a part of the, the community, whether they use our platform or, uh, you know, they use a, a decentralized game or what, whatever it is, um, they stay because they have been informed to a point of understanding the, the advantages, the opportunities. If people are just coming into the space without the proper um, understanding and, and uh, knowledge about what they're getting into and, and uh, how it's going to affect their lives and benefit them, hopefully, uh, then it's a short stay because it's speculative. They buy some Bitcoin at the wrong time. Bitcoin goes through its cycle and they feel like they lost money, they get out before it can even go back to a higher point than they had purchased. And that's their experience. So uh, both with Equify and any other project, I, I always recommend um, education being front and center. We want to educate our users, obviously, um, with the partnership uh, with Equibank, we're powered by Equibank. Uh, we have a lot of digital banking clients who've never had crypto before that are now being exposed to a platform called Equify. So we're gonna create a very meaningful and, and easy to understand educational series to bring them up to speed on what has been happening. How is that different from the, the products and services they have been using all their lives? What are the advantages? What are the shortcomings? If there is some like irreversible transactions, a lot of people in the banking space, uh, you know, like the peace of mind that uh, they can call their bank and cancel a wire transfer if they made a mistake, or the bank is going to uh, be the guardian of their um, transactions and protect them. Obviously, with this decentralized finance, uh, you don't have those, but then there are the advantages. So we we are going to put education front and center, and, and we're going to make sure that every question that our constituents, our stakeholders, our users have uh, gets answered and, and, and guides us through the next iteration of the platform. If someone's asking constantly about something that's not really... Uh, clear for them, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe we can learn from that user's experience. So we value the community. We're going to interact with them both as educators, but also as uh, people who want feedback, who want to do better. And, and we're just going to um, hope to further the decentralization and DeFi agenda through meaningful dialogue with both existing DeFi community members as well as um, as well as uh, newcomers. Um, 
if we um, take for granted both uh, education as well as a complement to that, which I believe is ease of use, uh, there has been a, a, a great improvement in um, uh, crypto applications becoming easier and easier to use, and, and that trend must continue. If we um, uh, take these two for granted, what do you see as uh, the uh, biggest um, obstacle uh, for uh, Equify to, uh, to uh, become mainstream? Well, that's a heavy question. What is the biggest obstacle for us to become mainstream? Um, I think we have, um, we have been very uh, fortunate to start with a strong relationship with our regulators. So we, we, we don't expect a lot of issues on the regulatory side or, or licensing side because we are starting the journey with uh, all, the, all those tools in place that we're gonna need to be compliant and need to provide a bank grade um, a platform to all our users. I think the biggest uh, challenge that we're gonna face is going to be educating people on how to use the technology and be comfortable with it. I think that's gonna be um, you know, our million dollar question because the DeFi users who already are in a bunch of different blockchains or different pools, they understand everything. They're going to grasp it really fast. For them, it's going to be exciting that now they can have their fiat accounts next to their crypto accounts. And, and that's, um, that's a good audience. That's our core audience right now. The expansion that we want to do, bringing fresh money, new users, uh, new sets of eyes and, and uh, different um, groups and communities in the world who have not used crypto and, and maybe not even digital banking, the education uh, journey there and the adoption, understanding, getting comfortable with the technology, that's, that's I see as, as our biggest uh, adoption challenge. And we're well equipped and prepared with a strong uh, strategy to tackle it head on. We're not going to assume anyone that we talk to knows what MetaMask is. We're not going to assume anyone we talk to feels comfortable uh, banking on their phone or banking on their computer. And we're going to start with the basics. We're going to assume everyone is a cash user. They carry cash and you know they um, pay stuff with cash money. And we're going to take that level of um, understanding and familiarity and try to get them uh, at a state where they're very comfortable logging into Equify.com and, and uh, conducting their business, whether it's uh, on the fiat side or on the crypto side and not worry about, am I gonna lose my funds? Is this safe? Is this legal? Are they regulated? Is my money at risk? We wanna really soothe people's minds and put them at ease with the partnerships and the products, the way we structure them so that they're not gonna um, feel lost. So uh, Brad, I uh, want to thank you a lot for uh, being here as uh, our guest and for your generosity given how delicate this moment is because you are about to launch. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, and and uh, I will take the remainder of the, the questions from uh, our participants. Uh, you are welcome to turn on off your camera, mute your microphone and hang uh, around while uh, we finish. Uh, and uh, and I will now address uh, the, the, the rest of the gang here and, and their numerous questions for which I am very, very happy. So, Thank you for having me, David. Uh, absolutely, Talk absolutely. Hi, everyone. Um, and and I'm sure we will have uh, uh, Brad uh, back, uh, uh, you know, in the next uh, few months uh, uh, to to see how Equify is uh, going because it is a very exciting project. So uh, the the next question is uh, very interesting. Um, uh, is uh, DeFi 
uh, the word of the decade, or there is going to be some other uh, major disruption uh, that is going to involve uh, blockchain? Well, uh, both, because uh, DeFi is here to stay. That is uh, uh, certain. Uh, its advantages are just too numerous. And traditional centralized banks are very unlikely to be able to compete. Either they embrace uh, DeFi or uh, they are going to go out of business. Now, there are uh, some jurisdictions uh, that are under what is called the regulatory capture. So in those jurisdictions, incumbent institutions are going to be able to keep DeFi at bay uh, in order to survive, not because on a level playing field they could, but because they have been able to um, uh, to tilt uh, the uh, the playing field uh, in their favor. However, um, the world is today uh, globally interconnected, and those jurisdictions that uh, accept this kind of uh, altering the of the rules are going to be at a disadvantage, and uh, it will become unsustainable to a po to the point where uh, the regulators will go back to the incumbents and they will say, listen, get ready uh, because you have been sheltered against uh, the disruption, uh, but uh, now we have to change the rules. Sorry, uh, but uh, this kind of protection is not going to be there anymore. On the other hand, uh, it is also true that while... Um, uh, whatever crypto is best for payments, whatever crypto is best for other traditional functions uh, uh, already well established on blockchain, whatever platform, for example, Akify succeeds in building billion dollar or trillion dollar uh, DeFi uh, initiatives, there will be uh, more um, exciting uh, functions that are discovered, uh, pioneered, and implemented on, uh, on, on blockchain. Uh, another of uh, the questions that uh, we are um, receiving, that we have received, is, for example, around the application of blockchain in governance. And we are already seeing it where um, it is now assumed that one of the uses of tokens uh, uh, that are native to some project is in governance, in um, approving or proposing to vote around certain um, uh, topics. Now, there are some other interesting uh, governance opportunities as well uh, that uh, are around uh, non-blockchain native organizations. Uh, what if uh, the student body uh, or even the faculty of a major college decided that they wanted to conduct frequent polling, frequent voting uh, using blockchain solutions? Um, and what if some of them decided that a certain number of these votes could be binding? Uh, and then, of course, um, there can be even more, uh, even thornier uh, opportunities, like uh, what about participatory budgeting, where in a transparent manner, uh, rather than conducting the uh, negotiations uh, behind closed doors uh, where uh, all the pork is traded, uh, uh, certain municipalities uh, would embrace uh, the transparency, the accountability, the immutability, um, uh, the pseudonymity of uh, blockchain-based solutions. So this is all very interesting and very exciting, up to and including the holy grail of understanding whether this all could be also applied to political elections. Um, the traditional view of the experts in uh, uh, elections is that blockchain should not be applied there. 
but uh, the innovation is relentless. Uh, we mentioned NFTs, we mentioned DeFi, we mentioned um, the applications of governance and identity. There will be many other innovations and uh, we will be here uh, to uh, talk uh, about them uh, in the following um, uh, installments of uh, uh, this uh, webinar series. Uh, to uh, conclude, uh, I want to, to thank you uh, for um, your participation and uh, I want to uh, confirm that uh, Beyond Enterprises is here for you uh, to make you and your blockchain uh, project successful. Uh, we have had uh, the pri privilege of uh, uh, supporting uh, many, many uh, clients. Uh, you will recognize uh, some major names uh, in the blockchain space uh, on this uh, uh, partial uh, list of, uh, of our clients. And we are really able to serve uh, your needs uh, uh, all around at uh, 360 uh, degrees were you uh, to request it. Um, the uh, important point in our uh, opinion is to start uh, with the right foot, uh, to be able to design and then implement a strategy uh, that is compatible, compliant, and sustainable uh, with your long-term uh, mission. And uh, our advisory and support uh, capabilities in this sense are uh, important to potentially be involved in the design of a project uh, right at the beginning. Um, and then, of course, the question is to implement them in so many different areas uh, from communications uh, to uh, uh, designing and, and writing uh, uh, the white papers, uh, managing a treasury after the launch of a token, and so on. Uh, we have uh, expertise and capabilities of um, implementing uh, together uh, with your specific needs uh, all of these uh, areas. Um, the world of blockchain is uh, rich um, with uh, facets that cannot be uh, ignored. Uh, and that is why, even though uh, there are uh, plug-and-play solutions that pretend to be able to um, uh, support a, a project at a very, very uh, low cost uh, uh, with uh, almost real-time uh, solutions, we believe that uh, um, a custom uh, strategy that analyzes uh, in your needs and the designs uh, solutions around them uh, is what is needed in order to be able to create sustainable uh, value. Uh, and that is what uh, the um, uh, cumulative market cap of over $14 billion uh, of uh, our project uh, really shows. Um, it, the uh, beauty of blockchain is that uh, it welcomes many, many ideas. And we want uh, the barriers to entry in blockchain to be low. Uh, that is how experiments happen. And uh, then uh, ideas are by themselves not enough. They must uh, be implemented. They must be iterated. They must be um, supported. And we are here uh, to, to do that in all the areas of uh, um, marketing, tokenomics, uh, and even technology development, software uh, development. Uh, that, uh, of course, is uh, key in uh, designing solutions that are uh, both uh, um, the, the, the best uh, for solving a specific need, but also easy to use, uh, beautiful, uh, scalable, and uh, uh, with uh, the help of Beyond Enterprises, that is what uh, projects uh, have been able to achieve in the past as well. Um, 
in your survey you indicated uh, that uh, you are uh, excited to um, get involved uh, in uh, in the uh, projects that you uh, want to complete with beyond's help so uh, i invite you to uh, uh, reach out with all of your questions so that we can uh, design a, a proposal uh, that uh, fits your needs uh, and then uh, work with you uh, on them uh, and uh, support you in your success. I want to thank again uh, Brad uh, Yassar, founder and CEO of Equify, for having been our guest today and all of you for your participation and uh, your uh, numerous uh, questions. And uh, I uh, uh, will be updating you uh, for uh, uh, inviting you to our next uh, webinar with a new guest uh, to talk about uh, blockchain and uh, what is exciting around it in its uh, various applications. Thank you and have a great weekend.